Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to introduce a technique called integration by parts. And this video is just going to be the statement and some broad ideas. Examples will be done in later videos. So integration by parts is one of many techniques used to integrate a product of two functions. There's another technique called integration by use substitution. So it's one of many techniques used to integrate products. Here's how. So suppose I have an integration problem like integral of little fx, sorry, capital fx times little gx. So it's a product of two functions. Now suppose I can find a function capital G whose derivative is little g. So I've taken this piece and I've found an antiderivative for it called capital G. And simultaneously, suppose I've found the derivative for capital F and I call that little f. Then this integral here is equal to the product of the capital functions, that's this function times the antiderivative of this thing, minus a new integral where this piece has been differentiated, right? And this piece I'm using the integral. Okay? So you'll go come back to this in a little more detail, mechanics of it. But let me just say the definite integral version, the definite integral version is the same thing, same as this, except now I'm specifying limits of evaluation is from A to B. So this product, I directly evaluate between limits. So that's just value at B minus the value at A. And this other integral I do between the same limits. Is that okay? Okay. Now there's another way of writing integration by part. I'll explain this more in detail. So, but there's another way of writing integration by part, which is in the UV notation. That's basically the dependent, independent variable type notation. And that says, integral u dv is uv minus integral v d u, which is a little cryptic. Here's a more clear way of saying it. Integral of u times dv dx dx is uv minus integral v d u dx dx. Now, just to understand how these are the same thing, and you can use, remember it either way, you should know how they're the same thing. What's the relation between the letters here and here? What's u in terms of this notation? Uh, capital Fx. Okay, so here the relation is u is capital fx what's dv dx uh, gx small gx yeah okay so that's the original product of rank minor what's v capital gx capital gx so that's the antiderivative for g which you need to find and what's du dx small fx this value is d we just make it pure and this is d is little fx. So this upper thing is dv dx, the lower thing is du dx. Okay, so and now you can see this is exactly the same, right? u dv dx dx is uv minus, I wrote them in a different order here, here I wrote du dx times v, here I wrote v du dx, but it's commutative, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so now that we have the statement, let me first explain very quickly why this is true. And you can think of it either way. I'll just do it this way. If I look at this product, what's the derivative of this? Using the product rule, the derivative of the product is capital F prime X GX plus FX G prime X. Now capital F prime X GX is exactly this. And fx g prime x is this, right, based on these. And so the derivative of this is this plus this, right? Mm -hmm. And now if you just sort of use, go from derivative to antiderivative, so you integrate both sides, then you'll get that this is this integral plus this integral. And then if you rearrange that, you'd get exactly this. So integration by parts follows directly from what rule for differentiation? Product. product rule. That's what we use here. And so that, that was just a quick sketch of the proof. And you do the definite integral one, you would have to just integrate between limits instead of just doing the integration. Now, next I want to quickly go over what the process would be to do integration by part. And this is sort of what I call a dry run. I'm not actually going to do an example right now. I'm just going to go over the process very quickly just to so understand what's happening and the example will be in subsequent videos. So what's the first step you would need to do to do an integration by parts problem? Let me just make the steps quickly state this. What's the first step? See any right here? Right side. So how would you do integration by parts? Step one would be 
you identify factors, right? The expression you are trying to integrate, you have to write it as a product of two pieces. Okay? This and this. What would step two be? Once you have identified the factors, what do you need to do next? You have to integrate the, the y, the small g, the little g. Yes. Well, yeah, but there's a little thing you have to do before. You have to figure out which factor to integrate and which one to differentiate. Right? You have to figure out. I thought that's step one. Well, yeah, it, you could make it part of step one. If I, I just wrote it differently, like in two separate steps. Figure out which part to differentiate, which part to integrate. We'll do a full example with this in a subsequent video. Okay, you can think of it as sort of the same thing, but the, yeah, these two steps you can think of them as together. Uh, then the third step, as as you pointed out, is to find an antiderivative. So find, if I'm using the FG notation, find the capital G and little f. Little f. Now finding little f is not a problem because differentiation is almost always straightforward. You just use formulas and techniques. Finding capital G might require some work. Okay? And if you, if you, if you have trouble with this, maybe you want to go back and rethink steps one and two. Once you found that, then what do you do? Apply the formula. Plug in the formula. Are we here? Right? Okay, good. Now, once you plugged in the formula, are we done? Are we done with the problem? Maybe, if we're lucky. Well, what we still have to do this integral, right? Oh, okay. So, yeah, do the second integral. So, overall, you see there's two, integ even in the, in the lucky case, there's two integration problems here. One is finding the antiderivative for little g. And the other is doing this second integration, which hopefully is is easier to do than the original one. I mean that was the whole point of using integration part. And step six, if is optional, you can just after you're done with this, you can verify by differentiating. Okay, verify by differentiating the origin. The x the x answer you get you differentiate and check that when you do that verification what should you be using as like what will happen when you do the verification what kind of rule for differentiation do you think you'll use product rule, product rule because integration by part sort of reverses the product so when you're doing this verification you should be getting something like a product rule and something should cancel and you should get something like this generally okay so that's that's the generic procedure and, and which parts of these are really tricky well Steps one and two are the real decision points, right? That's where you have to sort of decide what to do. Step three could be tricky. This part could be tricky. Finding G is your find antiderivative. Step five could be tricky. Finding the, doing the second integral. Steps one and two are the parts where you actually are making a decision, which could affect the future of your problem. If you make the wrong decisions here, then you may not be able to solve the problem as well as if you made the right decision. Okay. So, let me say a couple more things. So as I said, integration by path problem requires two integrations. One is they are going from little g to capital G here, and the other is this integration. Okay. Now for this integration, going from little g to capital G, you don't have to put a plus c. You just have to find one antiderivative that works. Or in this notation, uv notation, we already know u and dv dx, right? We know u and dv dx. You have to find v. You just have to pick one choice of v. You don't have to put a plus c here, and it doesn't matter which v you pick. So you could pick many different v's for any given dv dx, or you could pick many different capital g's for any given g. You can pick any one. It doesn't really matter as far as the complexity of the subsequent problem is concerned. Okay, so that, that's a minor point which we'll maybe come across later. So it's, it's not an issue which antiderivative you pick. The other thing I want to say is the sort of the conceptual relationship between these two, write it down here, is differentiate one part, integrate the other. So what do I mean by that? What's the relationship between this integrant and this integrant? Well, between these two integrants, the F, capital F has been differentiated, the little g has been integrated. 
Okay, you can see it here too. The u became du dx, the dv dx became v. So you're sort of pushing one part down and pushing the other part up, and that's how your two integrants are related. We'll talk about that again in a subsequent video. So conceptually, that's the way you should be thinking about the integration of a certain, right? The relation between these two integrals.